Welcome to the Two Disabled Dudes Podcast. We believe life is about how we react. All right, we're excited you're listening today. Thanks for being here. My name is Sean. Kyle's on the other side, but before we keep going, Kyle, I've got a big ask. Yeah, let's hear it. listeners. You know, actually, it's really not that big, but it kind of is, I guess, at the same time. You know, we have it in our outro, in our intro, and we ask people every now and then, but one of the things that really is helping us grow and helping us, say, stay or remain in the world of podcasting and and having an impact on so many people around the globe is our ratings on iTunes and formats similar. So whether you're using Stitcher or Google Play or maybe the new Pandora or not new, but for us it's new, um, we would really appreciate if you would take a moment, give us some five stars or four, whatever you think is fair, and maybe take a minute and just say how much you love us. Uh, we really <laughs> yeah. appreciate that, and, and that goes away. So I wanted to throw it out there just to ask you all or you, the listener, to to show us some love on those formats. Kyle, what's going on with you today? Well, so we have an awesome interview for the listeners coming up, but I wanted to share the latest saga about my car keys uh-oh. Yeah, so um, I got back from a trip and uh, putting all my stuff away. Everything is all disorganized, and I'm trying to do laundry and all this stuff. And then I go to work the next day, and I wait till the last minute, and I'm like, all right, I really got to get to work on time today. That would make me feel <laughs> good, right? Because I just got back from a trip, so I go to look for my keys like five minutes before I have to leave, and I'm like, Oh, crap. I can't find my keys. Mm. So I'm looking all over my apartment, like, trying to think, like, what pants did I wear? I check all my pants and, like, look at all the regular spots. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I can't find them. I'm like, all right, I am already late to work, but I don't want to be super late. So (laughs) I freaking call an Uber and I go to work in an Uber. (laughs) Because you're committed to being on time or the closest to on time as possible. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, uh-huh. so first time I ever took an Uber to work and I asked the driver, I'm like, have you ever given a, a ride to somebody who can't find their keys just to work? And he's like, no, never. I'm like, all right, today's a first for you. <laughs> <laughs> so so I go to work. Somebody gives me a ride home, so that was nice. That saved me ten bucks. Um and Paul, who you know, my friend Paul mm-hmm. comes over and he's helping me with a few things in my apartment. And I was telling him about the keys and all this stuff, and he's just like rolling his eyes at me and stuff. <laughs> and I'm I'm like looking around still, right? Because I need to find my keys to get to work tomorrow, the next day. And <laughs> And I look on the seat at my kitchen table where I always put my kids. I always put them there. And they're sitting right there. They were like just barely obscured by the back of the seat. But anyway, so. And and you missed them the day before. Oh, yeah. They they were always there. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They were always just sitting there, unless the key fairy or something like came sure. by and like dropped them down. But yeah. Oh my gosh. So anyway, uh, I, that I is the that latest you label saga. It saga because you do have some serious <laughs> drama when it comes to your keys. <laughs> I think I'm I glad need you a little found key them. hook. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody, today we have an awesome guest who is an amazing adaptive athlete, and we want to talk to him about that. We want to welcome our friend Kip Westland to the Two Disabled News Podcast. Kip, what's up? Hey, thanks, guys, and 
say it is three disabled dudes. Yeah, <laughs> man, I like That's it. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, good, good deal. All right, Kip. Well, um, so, you know, we want to introduce you to our listeners. And um, I was looking on your website last night, and I <laughs> came across a video called Control. And, uh, you know, yeah. it, it said you have an undiagnosed form of ataxia. Um, yep. And so can you tell us briefly ab- about the symptoms you okay. were experiencing bef- yeah. what, when yeah. you were looking for your diagnosis? It seems like I, you know, started short. Well, I guess going back, we can probably see earlier signs as we learn or about all these taxis and diseases. Uh, but generally, you say around age 10, 11, I was becoming more noticeably clumsy, uh, just, you know, tripping over my feet and not very coordinated. I around 18, yeah, I think around 18 years old, I was no longer able to run. I just could not coordinate my legs, my body to run. I mean, I definitely wanted to, my mind wanted to, but I just couldn't. Um, Around 24, I started using a single cane uh, to walk. And I mean, it was so very awkward, not very safe, but I kept using that uh, for quite a while, actually. Um, Around 30, at 28, I ended up woke up one morning to horrible pain down my arm, neck, and ended up having to have a couple of vertebrae in my neck fused. Um, recovered from that eventually. That was kind of the tipping point for me. I sat in front of the computer, played a lot of video games and such up until that. And my day job is, you know, working with computers and servers. So, I just wasn't exercising. And so, I, you know, through that whole recovery, it was kind of a wake-up call for me to say, all right, I have to take care of myself. And so fast forward, continue fast forwarding. Uh, I think I, this was actually before I went to the NIH. I was actually driving to the gym to get swim laps. I got rear-ended by another driver and having a lumbar fusion, uh, it's a back surgery. Um, after that back surgery, I, I mean, I tried to get back to a single cane, but I just couldn't safely. So for the next, I tried to for about a year, probably less than a year, I used forearm crutches to get around. Um, and then even that, you know, I started having more problems with my heels and legs and knees and all that stuff. Uh, trying to ambulate, so I switched to a manual wheelchair. And once I sucked up my pride and <laughs> did that, I was like, oh, hey, I can actually go places now. I can do things. Yeah, I'm not just that exhausted. <laughs> isn't that amazing how so, everyone is so f- yeah. afraid of it, uh, including myself. And then when you do it, yeah, you're like, oh, this is amazing. Yep, yep. You know, I want to hear about your adaptive sports <laughs> journey because I think that's yes. going to be the most valuable thing to our listeners because I think um, there's a lot of people out there who are like sitting at home going, what What the heck can I do? Uh, like like all yep. of us do yep. a lot of times. I don't know. Playing yep. lots of video games and just, yeah. uh, you know, like he said. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Yeah. I think it's amazing to get outside. I mean, for me personally, but also yeah. seeing you like on your Instagram feed and whatever else. And so <laughs> can you tell our listeners how you got started? Um, well, you know, I, I got started after... After the cervical fusion, I started swimming. Um, and that's a very safe thing to do. It's very, you know, it's completely non-impact. You can be in a safe environment in a swimming pool. And, you know, 
I started as a combination of trying to walk laps and starting to swim laps. And it, it was easier for me to jump into just because I had a, I've had a history of swimming since, you know, diapers. Um, <laughs> so I've always been comfortable in the water, but I started swimming laps and each time I went, I would be like, all right, so I'm going to try and do two more laps than I did yesterday. Mm-hmm. And pretty soon I was swimming a mile and then some, and then That's a couple awesome. miles. Wow. So yeah, it's just, it, it's a little daunting if you try and look at the big picture of it. But if you break it down, it's like, all right, so, you know, I did this yesterday. I made it. I didn't die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Still here. Yeah, let's, let's see if I can do more. And, you mm. know, part of that is, you know, I, I do tend to have somewhat of a stubborn uh, uh, personality in some aspects. So part of that was like, you know, now I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to let this thing control me. Before I had the cervical fusion at 28, I also had a road bike, um, which I I rode some, but it mostly collected dust. So after starting swimming and got my neck loosened up again, and, um, and I got a pretty good routine, I got back on the bicycle and started riding. And it was very much the same principle. And... Uh, it kind of structured like, all right, so I'm going to, you know, to ride around the block a few times. Now I'm going to go five miles, you know, 10 miles, 20 yeah. miles, 30 miles, 40 miles, and just, you know, kept on ramping it up. Um, and that, you know, I, you know, since I've been young, I, you know, a lot of my greatest memories involve being outdoors. Um, so it fulfilled that. Like I, I was naturally drawn to that, and also feel like I, you know, the video you mentioned earlier about the control that I was able to work with some very talented people here locally earlier this year. Um, you know, part of my thing with all of this is, you know, I, you know, I have, I do not have control over you know, the, whatever, whatever this disease is, I don't have control over that and what it's doing to me, but I can hold on to and focus in on the things that do feel like they give me control in relation to that. So that was one of the things it was like, you know, swimming, I felt better. I started getting more muscle, um, and the same thing with biking. It's, you know, a lot of these diseases, it's it's not so much that you, well, and I actually did feel a difference when I did it. I did feel things improve. Um, but for the most part, it's, you don't notice as much an improvement when you exercise, mm-hmm. but you notice even, even more drastically, you notice a decline when you are not exercising. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. You know, what? <laughs> so, yeah, I want to uh, go back to the control thing because, yeah. you know, I think that's a big thing that we talk about on this podcast. Is you know, life is about how we react. It's not about yep. the things that happen to you. It's about your reaction to them. You know, and uh, I really appreciate your. Uh, your your philosophy of it's all about control. It's about controlling the things that you can control, right? Like, and I think that yep. relates to every single thing in life, not just disability, but everything we face in life. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, yeah. I could probably go on wandering and talk right. for quite a while about this, but it's. It, yeah, it's like finding finding that thing that gives you. I mean, it's you get into the whole yoga and Zen and all that stuff, and it's like you find that thing that gives you the Zen moment that just lets you 
meditates per se and just gets you out of your, you know, the potential sides of the situation of this disease telling you you can't do things. I mean, if you focus on that, that you spiral down really quickly. I mean, that there's just nothing positive to be, to be gained from that, in my opinion. Right. Um, when you do find the things that you can actually do, you do them. Like, and uh, I admittedly have, have difficulty with moderation. So I <laughs> yeah. definitely, I find those things and I really do them. So, <laughs> um, Kip, so that, I love that you ahead. say that because... The working title of my recent book, it's not this yeah. title is gone now, but the working yeah. title was Moderation is the Enemy. Because yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, yeah. we, we only reach our potential <laughs> when we push the limits and when we find how far we can really yep. go, you know? Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. So, Kip, with that in mind, I'm curious, yeah. what, what would you say is... Uh, one of the craziest things you've done, um, athletically speaking. Uh, man, I feel like it's just beginning. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice. Um, so, well, back with, I started biking and then I started, uh, doing spin classes at the gym. Um, so then I was like, all right, so let's try swimming laps or let's try swimming labs and uh, doing a spin class in the same day. I was like, Oh, that was awesome. I slept mm -hmm. so good after that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, just felt like everything engaging. So I started doing that. And then I took, you know, I ended up getting a new road bike and started swimming and biking the same day doing doubles. So I like to call them um, or bricks. Uh, so I, I was feeling very good with that. Um, so at that point, and then I ended up switching to a, a recumbent trike to the Catrix 700 and yeah. started, I think, yeah. That's so I what think we my, both ride. Yeah, exactly. I absolutely loved it. <laughs> um, and I started riding, you know, doing like 7,500 miles rides on that thing. Uh, and I would just go out and ride. Then I started thinking, you know, I swim, I bike, I need to figure out what wheelchair racing is all about and see if I can do trap ones. So I started exploring that, I've had some local resources, uh, went to a track and field clinic that was put on locally by one of our nonprofits. Um, I didn't fit in any of the race chairs. I mean, they're all set up for kids and I'm, I'm a big dude. <laughs> so, so, but through that, I got connected with, and that was with the Adaptive Sports Northwest. Um, I got linked up to them with World Wheelchair Sports, which is a dear friend now, Kevin Hansen, um, Dan Eugene, a couple hours south of us runs that and he's he's got a you know workshop or tool shed you know full of old chairs so I went down and connected with him um went to one of his track things uh we finally we found a it was at the time about 25 years old it's probably close to 30 years old now an old quickie shadow race chair that I actually fit in um started pushing that I was like instantly hooked mm. uh, and his so, program was usually go ahead kip real quick uh, you know you said yeah. you were instantly hooked um and i yep. have to ask you about that because yeah. i tried your triathlon one time i borrowed a race chair yeah. from yep. someone yep. Yep. and um actually it was the i am able foundation i borrowed a chair yeah and yeah. It was horrible. I hated it so much. <laughs> like it was painful. Yeah, yeah. I was slow, and yeah, I was like, I, "Why don't I just get back on my trike? Because I can actually do yep, that, you know." Yep. And so, yeah, what what do yeah. you have to say? Why do you love it so much? Because I disagree. Uh, <laughs> you know, I 
and I think exactly what you said. I think it's, I think it's a very, you know, responses to it are very polarized. You either love it or you hate it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it, it just worked for me. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I want to go back to that video, yeah. that control video. In the video, yeah. you you put your finger to your nose, and your finger is like flailing around like crazy, right? And it's <laughs> yep. Yep. it's an yep. uncontrolled motion. Yeah. And um, yep. you know, you say when you get on your race chair, that goes mm -hmm. away, and you can just like forget about a taxi basically for for however yeah. long you're on there and just get after it right how do, how does that work yeah. how does that feel it i mean it it feels liberating it's uh you know it's the same thing with the hand cycle for ringside you know i'm also cranking tons of miles on the hand cycle right now um it's you know it's one of those things it's you know i'm able to do it and do it very well and not feel, you know, like trying to hold my finger to my nose, you know, it's shaking all over the place. It's whatever I'm doing with the motion and the action of that exercise and pushing a race wheelchair or cranking a hand cycle, it, I can do it. <laughs> and it's, it, you know, I can dive into trying to break that down more, but the, the, you know, the basic thing is, you know, I can't. <laughs> right, yeah. Therefore, I do. And it's, it gives me, well, it's, it's, I mean, motivation to myself that, you know, it's, you know, I, I can't really hold my finger to my nose right. very well without it shaking all over the place. But I can get out and do this other thing that feels more impactful, beneficial, and a lot bigger than you know. Totally being able to yeah. being able to pick my nose, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny how people really yeah. focus on those things. They're like, "Oh my gosh, yeah. you're so disabled because you can't put your <laughs> fingers through your nose." And you're like, "What are you talking about? I just rode my trike a hundred miles." Who's oh, disabled yeah, now, right? Like, so it's funny it, how we define those things. Yeah, it's crazy. So, really quick, quick story. Um, man, it was, I can't remember how long ago it was, but I had some guy, you know, I just met. He was an older guy and he was interesting. I think he was from, from the backwoods type of <laughs> mentality. <laughs> uh, he just didn't know. He didn't know. So right. he he's like, Oh, so here's a wheelchair so I mean, what do you do? My response was, Well, you know, I'm working a full time day job that I have been working for quite a while. I make a considerable amount of money with it and I also work a second job on the side to help pay for all the toys mm -hmm. and I'm doing all this exercise, so I you know, I I would say there's a lot of things I can do. Yeah. You know, and being like a in a wheelchair. Life to me. Yes, like being in a wheelchair is not my definition. Mm. That is a tool to you know, allow me to do the rest of life. It's about yeah. being in a community. Um, and you yep. found an incredible community in adaptive yep. sports. So, yep. how does that contribute to your life and your well being? Uh, it's huge. You know, I, I definitely went headfirst into the whole adaptive sports world. Once I, you know, as a part of trying to get in triathlon, I got connected with challenge athletes foundation and went down to San Diego. I did a whole pair triathlon camp with them. Um, so that was kind of my, one of my very early exposures to adaptive athletes. Well, and um, you know what? At that camp, or yeah. I bet I bet you met yep. a bunch of people that you could really relate with, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I, and at the time, I was extremely new uh, mm -hmm. to all this stuff. So I, and I, all these other people, they have been at it for quite a while. And I just like I, I don't belong here. You know, I, I'm just not sure if I fit. 
then as I started doing it more, it's like, oh, this is home. You know, yeah. this is this is you know where I'm supposed to be. That's um, awesome. So, yeah. So after that, I I really started pushing a race chair and doing. Um, so I've done multiple half marathons. I've done a marathon in the race chair. And then for 2017, 2018, um, I was the national champion for the 100 and the 800 meter. Oh my gosh. Uh, so wow. that's for the T for my classification for T33, right. which, which I mean, I'll downplay that a little bit and say, it's like, <laughs> You know, like, yeah, I got first place in a podium of two (laughs) (laughs) or I made, I made podium, but it's, you know, there's just not a lot of T33s in the States. So Mm. I started doing that. So I, I trained big, big time. Um, and that was kind of life, you know, 2017, 2018. I, I think I burned myself out a little bit last year, 2018, and it kind of made the transition. I started doing, you know, like off-road hand cycling end of last year. Yeah. And after being so like over the top regimented and training, I, you know, started doing that. I was just like, this is just fun. You know, <laughs> yeah, man. I need to do this. And plus like, I'm, I'm turning over 40 here pretty soon. And, like in the track competition, I'm out there competing with, you know, fifteen to twenty-five year olds. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Hey, join the club, man. Like, me, yeah. me and Sean are almost the same age. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and you should be just just yeah. proud that you're out there. And <laughs> it's yeah, amazing exactly. to me that people yep. in similar yep. positions, you know, and. and I don't want to say disabilities, but lack yeah. of independent abilities. Mm-hmm. I feel like we sometimes move more than other, like people with full yeah. capability. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. There's something to be proud exactly. of there, no matter no matter yeah. what you're ever getting. Yeah. Get, but I'm going to ask you. You know, throughout the entire yep. conversation, you have at, or you've mentioned disabled sports and challenged yes. athletes foundation yes. and a bunch of local groups in Oregon. Yep. If yep. one of our listeners or some of our listeners were maybe brand new to the world of adaptive yeah. sports and they're wanting to kind of get their feet wet, where would you recommend somebody begin? Um, How would you encourage them to get involved? Find find one of these organizations closest to you, uh, and just you can even just start doing a Google search for like adaptive sports, and just see what's local. Um, and it's uh, uh, it's kind of difficult. Uh, it's getting easier to find these. I had a hell of a time, like just finding out that this stuff existed. I had no idea. If I didn't know, I would have been doing this years ago. <laughs> like I would have gotten a much, much earlier start. So um, I think there's a, there's a relatively good listing of organizations. If you look up Adaptive Sports USA. Yep. Um, so Adaptive Sports USA, and they've got a bunch of like, uh, other more local organizations listed, I think, on the website if you click around enough. Um, but yeah, I I would definitely, and you can shoot them a message. I think Shelly is their front desk person. Uh, but shoot them a message. Shoot Challenge Athletes a message. Uh, definitely look up challengeathletes.org. Um, Very nice. Check out their stuff. They can help get you networked in. Uh, with other organizations as well, so as awesome. you can tell, I've become I become a little bit passionate about this stuff. And <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and, and sure. you know, Kyle and I are familiar with both, yep. so we'll be sure to yep. Yep. put their links in our show notes and yep. uh, episode yep. notes, so yep. people can click yeah. real easily so, to find them. Yeah. One more question for you, Kit, before yeah. we wrap up. If sure. people want to connect with you, they want to find you on social media or find your website, yes. where yep. and how do they do that? 
<laughs> it's a good question. My website is, I think, with a lot of us, it's fallen a little bit outdated, but I think there's still a contact on there you can fill out and find some of my older stuff. It's, you know, I at some point I figured out I enjoy doing things more than I enjoy writing about them. So <laughs> I, <laughs> just what's your, do what's them your website? Don't, don't, uh, don't talk, kip it moving dot com. So K I P P I T M O V I N G. I love it. Dot com. Nice. Um, so that's website. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. Um, I think you just look up Kip Westland. There's not many of us out there. <laughs> look, look for look for the guy from Oregon. Shoot me a message on there. Uh, Instagram. I think my Instagram name is Kippy Do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. follow your Instagram, yeah. and yeah. Um, yeah. I love all the stuff. A lot of it is hilarious, <laughs> well, and you. a lot of it is informational too. So well done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, and that's that's my thing. You, you can't take yourself too seriously. Well, Kip, it has been an incredible encouragement. Uh, you know, not only to us, but I hopefully to all our listeners too. So. um Thank you for sharing your story, and thank you for just getting up and getting after it every day. You, you're incredible. Thanks so much, man. Yeah, and thanks for thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to the Two Disabled Dudes podcast. Find us online at twodisableddudes.com, and please subscribe on the iTunes. Connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And special thanks to our audio producer, Jake Tompkins. Until next time, keep living with urgency.